turn our Bibles to the book of Matthew, in chapter 13. Praise God tonight that I can be here and share from the Word of God. Just a quick reading. I'm going to read it first before I start anything. Matthew chapter 13. On the same day Jesus went out of the house and sat by the sea, and great multitudes were gathered together to him, so that he got into a boat and sat, and the whole multitude stood on the shore. Then he spoke many things to them in parables, saying, Behold, a sower has went out to sow, and as he sowed, some seeds fell by the wayside, and the birds came and devoured them. Some fell on stony places, where they did not have much earth, and they immediately sprang up, because they had no depth of earth. But when the sun was up, they were scorched, and because they had no root, they withered away. And some fell among thorns, and the thorns sprang up and choked them. But others fell on good ground and yielded a crop, some a hundredfold, some sixty, some thirty. He who has ears, let them hear. Let's listen to what God has to say tonight. What I'm going to title this message is Operation Cultivation. It's not nerdy, so we should have a war movie. But it's Operation means mission, cultivation is landscaping, it's breaking apart ground in order to plant the seed. But it's not just planting, it's also growing and it's also harvesting. And I was on a group the other day and I couldn't believe how many people didn't understand what the parable of the sower meant. And parables are like laser beams, you know, it shines upon you. Do you ever see in those movies where people are trying to rob a bank or something or rob a safe and they're trying to slide through these little uh, lasers? And what them lasers do is they shine upon the person and it exposes them and says, well, he's trying to rob. We have intruders there. And that's what a parable is doing to you. It's intruding your life. It's showing you who you really are. What a parable is tonight is a mirror and it's also a window. Because it's showing you what you are tonight. And it's also showing you what the world is like tonight. And in the Greek, we get the word parabole, which means to cast aside or to place beside. And that's what the parables are about. That's what it means. It's casting aside the known beside the unknown. So it's trying to teach us a heavenly truth in an earthly story. And tonight, what I'm trying to focus on is a diagnosis to see what type of heart do you have tonight when it comes to hearing the word of God. And you know, when, at the time Jesus was speaking, he was by the Sea of Galilee. And there was religious leaders and Jewish people. And they spent so much time in religion. They spent so much time wrapped up in traditions that their spiritual senses were growing dull and they could no longer hear what God had to speak. It was what this man said, and what that man said, and what religion does, and what tradition does. And that's why Jesus spoke in parables. He spoke that people might see, that people might hear, that they might turn away from their sinful lives. He spoke to cause interest and to awaken those whose spiritual senses were growing dull. And sadly tonight, and at that time, people hardened their hearts against the word of God. Still against the parables, but you know the same sun which melts the ice also hardens the clay. So tonight, watch your attitude and how you listen to God's word. You know, parables are important because it's one third of what Jesus taught in the Gospels. And that means if you don't know the parables, you don't even know one third of the things Jesus had taught. There's so much to learn. You know, the Pharisees made fun of Jesus for eating and sitting with sinners. You know what Jesus said? He told them a story about a lost sheep, a lost coin. And a lost son. And you know Jesus constantly spoke in parables. He spoke in parables to reveal hidden truths. And through the parables. We have a responsibility to learn. We have a responsibility to live. And we have a responsibility to share the truth. And that's our responsibility tonight. It's something that must not be neglected. And do you ever wonder. When you hear someone preaching like me. Or you hear someone preaching like Michael. Or whichever. Where does the word go? Where does the word of God go? Well, that's what the parable is about. It says in Mark chapter 4 verse 13. If you do not know this parable, how will you know the rest? And what the seed means in this parable is the word of God. Where does the word of God go? When someone casts the big bag of seeds into a field, it lands in different areas. But tonight I'm talking about the word of God. When someone starts preaching, there's... What's there, about 30 people here tonight? I don't know, I haven't counted. 
But when I preach the word of God, it's going out to each and every heart there. But depending on what heart, will depend on how you react to the word of God. And in 1 Peter, in chapter 1, verse 23, it says, Having been born again, not of corruptible seed, but incorruptible, through the word of God which lives and abides forever. So the problem tonight isn't the word of God. Because the word of God is perfect. The problem tonight is this. This big, moldy, black, hard heart which barely is beaten inside your chest. That's why you can't respond to the word of God tonight. In order to have a living plant, we must have a living seed. And the living seed is the word of God. So if I don't have the word of God, then I'm dead. I'm as well to be dead because I'm going to hell. Because the word of God's not living in me. You know, there's potential in a seed. Do you ever walk down through the pathways or you're driving down the road and you see a big crack in the ground where the pavement's been pulled apart? Because it's just one little seed. Something that was once a seed has become something so big that it tears the concrete out of the ground. The word of God is like that. It's powerful, living and active. And it tears apart the rock which is inside your heart. And in Hebrews chapter 4, in verse 12, that's what it tells us. It says the word of God is living and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword. It reaches each and every part of the heart. And what seeds do tonight is they produce fruit. Do you ever see an apple tree with, with the seed inside the, the little apple? When that apple is grown, there's more seeds again, so that the word can just keep going and keep going. And that's what the word of God is like. It grows someone like me, or like the person who's saved here tonight, that we can keep bringing forth fruit for God, because the seeds are endless. And when the word of God reacts with a human heart, the evidence is there's fruits. And the fruits are the fruits of the Holy Spirit, which is listed in Galatians, in chapter 5, verse 22 to 23. I'm not going to list them, but there's love, and there's patience, there's forbearance, and there's other things as well. But that means if you're not producing these fruits tonight, then you have to realise that you're not growing tonight. It means you're not a godly plant. And the Word of God has the power to change you tonight. It has the power to change your life. To break that rock-hard heart. And when planting a seed, it's all about the ground which you plant it on. And it's all about taking care of that seed. And it's the same for when we read the word of God. What type of heart do you have when you're listening to it? Tonight we need to make sure that our hearts and the hearts of others are prepared. And we have that word sower. We're going to move on to who, is, who the sower is. Well, in this parable, Jesus is the sower who's sharing the word of God. And... Technically, Jesus should be the reaper, but there was no harvest at the time. So Jesus went out and he planted the seeds. He scattered them out. And do you know what happened? The Jews rejected God's word. The Jewish people had turned to men and they've turned to traditions. And because of this, they were spiritually dead. So Jesus came out to get them seeds, redig the ground. He got his pitchforks, he got everything, his rake, leveling out the ground, fixing it all up. He's coming to prepare the hearts of the people and he's coming to remove that rock hardness from their hearts and they give them the offer of salvation so that they can respond. And when sharing the word, it's important tonight that we have the right heart and the right attitude when listening to it. We need to be willing to change tonight. We need to be people that's hearts aren't turned from God. But we need to turn from our wicked and sinful lives. And to be a good sower, you must have concern and you must have care. It's not about, I don't care Whatever happens, I'm going to plant it and leave it. You know, that's not good. You plant a seed, you're meant to water it, you're meant to protect it. Make sure that the birds don't come around. You have a big scarecrow. Our scarecrow is Jesus, by the way. And no one will come around us. If, if, when Jesus is standing there and someone comes to attack us, Jesus will run them birds away. Some might get in and some might try to tear you apart, but Jesus will run them up the road. He'll get up, get out, run up the road. Put them going. And in order to have a big harvest and to see people get saved, we need to water the seeds with tears. Which means we need to have care for the people. It says in Psalms 126, verse 5 to 6, Those who sow in tears shall reap in joy, but he who continually goes forth weeping, bearing seeds for sowing, shall doubtless come again with rejoicing, bringing sheaves for them. And it's not all just about one man. It's not about one man that's going to go out to the field. It's about all of us coming together in unity to spread the word of God. We're not trying to get people in our seats tonight. We're trying to get people saved. We want to see people's lives changed. We want to see people go to heaven. Because whether we like it or not, our families and our people are going to hell. 
Because they won't respond to the word of God. They won't repent from religion and tradition like the Jewish people who were thrown into bondage. It takes patience tonight to see it grow. And we must work together. The Apostle Paul said in 1 Corinthians chapter 3. He says, I planted the seed, Apollos watered, and God gave the increase. And that's where the increase comes from tonight. It comes from God. Because God's word, not my word, not anyone else's word, not my power, because God has me, I have no power. But it's God's word tonight that gives the power and changes lives. And you know, unfortunately tonight, some people, when they're sowing, they sow in sin. And Galatians chapter 6, in verse 7, it says, Do not be deceived, because God is not mocked. For whatever a man sows, he will weep. He will reap, I mean. For if he sows his flesh, then he will reap corruption. But he who sows to the Spirit, will of the Spirit have everlasting life. What a good saying. You reap what you sow. If you spend your time in the Word of God, growing from the Word of God, then you will grow into a godly creation. But if you spend your time going to everywhere else except the Word of God, then I'm sorry tonight, but you're growing up to be a sinful, corrupted being. And soil tonight, which is mentioned in this parable, it equals our hearts. It means that heart that's beating in your chest, how it reacts to the Word of God. And soil has great potential. It has the potential to turn into a forest. Like there's a, a famous forest in the world called the Butcher's Gardens. It started off as a little pot of gravel. And that was one of the biggest and greatest forests in the world. When there's a living seed and good ground, there's great potential. Amen. And because God's word is a seed and our hearts are soil, that means we can respond to the word of God. And now that we've spoke about the soil, I want to speak about the different types of soil, which means the different types of our hearts. Now we start off with the hard heart. It says that the seed was thrown among the pathway. And it's normal for that to happen because there's a big field and the farmer doesn't want to be walking on top of his seeds and his plants. He'll crush his carrots, his grapes and whatever. He'll crush it all. But what the farmer would do, he'd build a big path and he'd pass through and he'd bend down. Yeah, I'll fix that seed. I'll get my watering can. I'll do that. And that's what he'd do. He'd have the pathway. But when the sower would throw his seeds, these seeds would fall among that ground and the birds would come along and they'd attack that seed and the seed was gone. And the reason for this is because the ground was so hard that the seed just couldn't grow. There was no soil there. It was just hard. It was as hard as this, if not harder. It was harder than that table, harder than this ground. Because it was rock, pure rock. And so the seed couldn't sink in. And that's the same with the person tonight that cannot comprehend or understand the word of God. They just can't understand it. You know, James, the, the disciple of Jesus, the brother of Jesus, the James who wrote the book of James, he was kept awake at night because of his sin. He was convicted of his sin. And tonight, I'm sure there's people here that really just don't care. They sit up at night and they don't even care about their sin. They can sleep like a baby and live in corruption and evilness. But tonight, if it's not bothering you tonight, then I'm sorry, but you're not saved. Your sin has to bother you. Your sin has to sit up and roar at you at night and tell you, and tell you how evil you are. You know, that's just the truth of what it is. But the hard heart cannot accept that they're a sinner. And the hard heart cannot accept that they need change. He who has ears, it says, let them hear. That's what it says tonight. Let them hear. That's what the word of God says. So tonight, whatever your heart is tonight, listen because we all need change tonight. Amen. You have room for business and pleasure. But tonight you need room for Jesus Christ. Amen. And there's shallow ground as well. Written in this parable. And the shallow ground is the emotional hearer. Who goes, yippee, I want to go to church. I'm joyful, I'm happy. Praise God. Jesus died for me, he loves me. But it's not about having an emotional experience with Christ. But tonight what it's all about is even when persecution comes and trials comes, we're rooted in Christ. And no matter what comes and hits us, we're still going to walk on with God. And in this parable, this shallow ground, and the reason it was shallow, because it was probably about that much of soil, and about that much rock. And it was normal in this time by the Sea of Galilee, there was limestone under beneath the rocks, and under beneath the uh, soil. So there would only be about that much soil. And because of this, the seed couldn't really interact properly with the soil. It grew a little bit. 
But it was so easy to come up. It was as easy as that to come out. As easy as that microphone. You know, it could be easily pulled up. And when the sun came and it shined among these plants, they burnt away. And what the sun represents in this parable is persecution and hard times. But you know what's funny? The sun also helps a good plant to grow. Because a plant can't grow without the sun. So why is this plant burning away? Because this plant isn't even a good plant. This plant is just a dodgy plant. It has, it's not saved. It's not a person who was saved. No, this is a person who wants everything but Christ. They want everything what Christ can give you now. They want the joys of this life. They want the happiness of being a Christian. They want the Jesus loves me. The everything he can give me. But tonight we ain't free listening people here tonight. But we're here to tell you that being a Christian will be hard. Times will get difficult. But when we stand firm on God's word, when we stand firm in Christ, nothing will shake us. We'll be like the rock, the, the house that was built upon the rock and not the house that was built upon the sand. You know, tonight it's all or nothing. It costs you to be a Christian tonight. But unfortunately, people aren't willing to do that. People aren't willing to pay the price that... Being a Christian isn't a one week thing and Christmas comes along and I'm going to take a break this week. Or Easter comes along and I'm going to take a break. Or this such a fella's birthday party. Or a funeral or a wedding comes along and I have a break. No, Christianity is a lifetime thing. And because it's a lifetime thing, that must mean it's a lifetime thing. It's as simple as that. The easiest way to put it. And now we come to the thorny ground. Which is the crowded heart. The heart which... Responded to God, wants the things of God, but also wants the things of the world. But we know tonight that a good farmer hate, will love his crops, but he will hate the weeds when they start to grow on the thorns. Because the thorns and the weeds are enemies. It's there to tear apart our crops and to cause some unnecessary growth. And whether you like it or not, thorns and weeds will grow. We don't necessarily have to plant them, it just happens. And when they grow, we get weed killer or we pull it back up. You wouldn't want to put weed killer on soil now on a big soily ground where you're growing plants. So you pull up them weeds and you make sure the ground is clean. And if you're going to plant more seeds, you make sure that the ground is clean. And the ground was unclean in this particular parable when the seeds were thrown. And what happened was all these weeds and these thorns, they began to smother the word of God, the seed which was growing in the man's heart, which is the cares and the riches of this world, the sinfulness of this life, the lust, the money, the pride, the women, the, the nightclubs, the partying. It was all crowding this man's heart. And it crushed the seed. And it stopped any growth. Genesis chapter 3 says that thorns grew on the earth when sin came. And it's the same for in our lives. Thorns begin to grow in our lives. Weeds start to grow and crush the word of God. Which is inside our hearts. When we begin to start sinning and turning against God. And what the thorny ground is, it's the heart that's preoccupied with the things of this world. It's a divided heart. But you can't be divided tonight. You can't be a person who wants the best of both worlds. You can't have one foot in heaven and one foot on earth. Because if you have one foot on earth, then you have both foot on earth. You can't have one foot here and one foot there. There's not enough gap to fit one foot here and one foot there. This ain't the hokey pokey tonight. <laughs> You know, we're not putting one foot in and one foot out. In, out, in, out, shake all about. We're not doing that tonight. It's not the hokey pokey. But then we come to the good ground tonight. And I'm trying not to keep this much longer. But the good ground, it doesn't simply mean I'm a great person or I'm a good person. But what it means is that we have the heart that wants to understand God, that understands this word. And not only understands it, but holds fast to it. It means that we're willing to change and to hear what God wants to say. It means that we're going to Turn away from the worldly influences and we don't care if persecution and trials come. We're going to stand for Christ anyway. No holiness, no heaven. That's simply what it is. We have to live holy lives. Not that holiness gets us to heaven, but holiness proves that we're going to heaven. And by their fruits, it says in the Bible, you shall know them. Faith without works is dead. Not that we are saved by works, but faith is proven by how we live, how we work. And sadly, the other three types of heart, this is a hard one, but they weren't saved. The three other hearts, they weren't saved. They had no salvation because of the way they reacted to the word of God. But the proof of salvation is fruits and a changed life. 
In John chapter 4 you'll see a good illustration of how these four hearts were displayed and how Jesus illustrated it through the woman in Samaria. You know, Jesus spoke to her in four different ways and we see her heart change in four different ways. But tonight I'm going to get to the purpose of this message because I brought you through a long list of what things are. But a fruitful heart is a heart that listens to God's word. Amen. It says, he who has ears, I'm not pointing my ear, he who has ears, let them hear. That's what it says tonight. That is the purpose of the message. If you have ears tonight and you can understand what I'm saying tonight, then you have to respond tonight. You have to say, I'm willing tonight to turn away from the wickedness and the sinfulness of my life, the traditions of men, the hair says and the this says and his, he says. We have to turn away from that and say, what does God say in his word? Mark chapter 4, 24 tells us to be careful what we hear. Galatians 6 tells us we reap what we sow. It's a warning tonight. It's simply a warning because if you reap in this world and reap in sinfulness, then you will grow in sinfulness. But if you reap in God, if you sow in God's word, then you will grow in God's word. And that's as simple as that. You sow, you grow. But whichever way you want to grow, it's up to you. We need to pay attention to God's word tonight. We need to cultivate our hearts. When you hear the word of God or read it, let it sink in. Let it grow. Let it take its action. But we've got to take that step and say, I want to change tonight. Because it's God's power that changes me. Romans 10 verse 17 says, faith comes by hearing the word of God. Amen. And so tonight, if you're not reading your Bible, tonight if you don't listen to the word of God, then you have no faith. You have faith in everything else, but it says you won't have true faith in God. 2 Timothy chapter three, chapter 4 verse 3 to 4. It says, be careful of wanting to hear doing exciting things that it may pull us away from the truth. You know, we must stay in the Word of God. Look, that book, there's parts of it that's 2,000 years old, there's parts of it that's 3,000, 4,000 years old. But just because it's old doesn't mean it's outdated. The Word of God, as I said in the book of Hebrews, in chapter 12, 4, verse 12, it says that it's still alive, it's still active, it's still living. But we need to be careful of what other things we listen to tonight. We must sink in with the Word of God. We need to be like young Samuel in the book of Samuel who said, Lord, I'm your servant. Speak. You, now I'm going to leave you with a question tonight as I, as I finish this word. If you were locked up tonight, you were arrested. If it was illegal to be a Christian and you were arrested tonight, you stood in a court of law. Is there enough proof and enough evidence to say, well, he's guilty? Judge, your honour, he's guilty. Is there enough evidence tonight to say that you're guilty of being a Christian? Because if there's four different types of hearts tonight. There's the hard ground, there's the shallow ground, there's the thorny ground, and the good ground. And tonight, this is an examination. Which ground are you tonight? Which heart are you tonight? Because whether you like it or not, one of these grounds are you tonight. And tonight, it's as simple as that. We believe in the gospel. The gospel is salvation through Jesus Christ. It's putting our faith and trust in the resurrection in the burial, in the death of Jesus Christ. In them three steps, Jesus came and he brought salvation to us. Not that we could do anything, but what he could do for us. And when he died upon that cross, he put our sins on that cross and he died for us. That's why there's no such thing as penance. There's no such thing as anything else we can do. But it's by putting our faith in Jesus Christ tonight. Amen. Which heart are you? And are you willing to change? God bless you. Amen. Amen.